Hey everyone, welcome to another video. I'm actually really excited about this one because today I'm gonna talk about my hip injury. So tell you a little bit about that as well as my rehab process. And I'm also going to walk you through an amazing workout that will help you even if you don't have an injury like me, but maybe you have stubborn weak glutes or you've got some sort of imbalance. I sort of brushed over my injury in my last workout video, but there are tons of comments regarding my form, particularly my lunge form looking really awkward. And trust me, I know and I agree, it does look really bad. I'm not offended <laughs> at the comments or anything, but I do want to address it and I'll probably make small disclaimers moving forward just to avoid any confusion because even though sometimes to me it seems like I'm repeating myself over and over again because having an injury is so frustrating. Like sometimes I just want to be like, yep, my form really sucks right here and it annoys me because trust me, I look at the videos after and I'm just like, oh, and sometimes I re-record clips and just and it can get really annoying. So sometimes I'm just like, just forget about it and move on. And I forget that for you guys, it's like a new thing that you haven't seen before. And then you'll automatically jump to the conclusion. Like I'm sure most people would that I just can't do the exercise properly. When in fact, my actual joint is limiting my range of motion and it's causing like a really awkward sort of like half lunge with and my hip raises. Anyway, if you saw my last video, then maybe you noticed. The thing is with a chronic injury, along with constantly working on it when I'm not in the gym, mobility exercises, stretching, sports, massage therapy, physiotherapy, I still have to make a decision at the end of the day. Do I just wanna do nothing in terms of training or do I wanna try to work around it? And that's what I decided to do. And that's why you still see me post informative workout videos even though my form is like eating away at my soul because I know that it doesn't look great but it's better than nothing for me right now. I'm going to be doing everything I possibly can to try to get this hip fixed. But I do know from my Instagram that a lot of you guys might be past athletes or current athletes and if you've done any sort of like intense training as an athlete or competition, that sort of thing, then you probably have had your fair share of injuries. Maybe you've had them in the past or you're currently dealing with them now and having to do rehabilitation or modify your training. So you understand my frustration. <laughs> if not, and you've never had injuries, that's the best case scenario, but this video will still apply to you, especially if you have a hard time activating your glutes or maybe you have any imbalances in your lower body. So one side is noticeably more strong or mobile than the other side. That's actually super common. And I'd say a lot of people have weak and or unresponsive glute med and glute max. So this routine will really help you to strengthen them. If you are interested in hearing about my specific injury, then I am going to briefly talk about it now. If you're not and you just wanna skip forward to the workout, that's completely fine. I'll leave the time on the screen here so you can click through and I'll see you there. Okay, so I've been having issues with my hips for years now. It all originates from an injury that I sustained when I was training for powerlifting in 2014. It was an overuse injury. I pulled a tendon in my left hip. It was actually pretty bad. It developed into tendonitis and I ended up having to take few months off of training like off of squatting and deadlifting completely at the time I was just very tunnel vision on my goals and I wasn't very educated in terms of injury and rehabilitation and anatomy and that sort of thing so I really didn't take care of it like I should and then I also was a student so at the time paying for physiotherapy and expert advice wasn't really I couldn't really afford it at the time. Just with resting it, even though I did kind of make it worse a little bit by stretching, which is really bad. You shouldn't stretch a tendon that's trying to heal itself. But over time, it seemingly healed and I continued to put mass amounts of stress on it through my training, through powerlifting, all while dieting for shows, etc. That being said, I did spend a lot of time working with a powerlifting coach to make my form pretty well near immaculate for both squatting and deadlifting. That was like my pride and joy my form was very very good for someone with my 
long femurs and that sort of thing. It, it was excellent if I do say so myself. So that definitely helped to avoid any sort of damage accruing to form more injuries. However, I do think that it sort of masked any signs of overuse. So fast forward years later, between 2015 and 2018, when I was sick with BII and experienced a lot of autoimmune and general health issues, which included severe muscle tightness, over time, the muscle imbalances stacked up and muscles compensated for one another. And eventually I developed extreme, extreme tightness on my left side. So approximately one and a half years ago now, my rectus femoris, my vastus lateralis, my TFL, my upper glute max fibers, and my piriformis, which is a tiny little internal hip muscle that is involved in sciatica, or it can be involved in sciatica, those were all completely, just completely and utterly locked up to the point where I could not flex or bend my hip properly. It was very uncomfortable. There wasn't any pain. It was just extremely frustratingly limited range of motion. After trying to stretch it off and foam roll to no avail, I eventually decided that enough was enough and that my training was suffering so badly so I started to get physio slash sports massage therapy on the left leg and hips since then. My sports slash physiotherapist after learning like how tight my entire hip was said that I was actually a hair away from developing piriformis syndrome. But luckily I did stay on top of everything and I kind of stretched and rehabbed enough myself to avoid sciatica developing. So I feel like I dodged a bullet because anyone who has ever for one experience like sciatica or have known someone to experience sciatica know that it's the absolute worst thing ever. Long story short, through massage therapy, a ton of stretching and rehab exercises over the past year and a half, we were able to totally loosen up the hip area, like all of those muscles and bring my hip back to normal. Yes, finally. So that's where I am now, but I did not have enough movement in my hip, especially lateral movement which would allow for proper glute medius involvement and activation over the last couple of years. So all this time my glute medius has kind of just sat there doing absolutely nothing because it was unable to kind of move through its proper range of motion. So now I'm currently left with a very, very weak, very unresponsive glute medius on my left side. So if you guys didn't know, the glute medius is a hip stabilizer muscle, primarily that's its deal, but its specific job is to abduct and medially rotate the hip. This is largely what is required to perform a lunge or any unilateral leg exercise especially when both the knee and the hip are flexed. If you guys did listen to all of that, then I appreciate you. That's it for everything that I have to say about my personal injury. So without further delay, I'm gonna show you how I'm modifying my lower body training to one, strengthen my glute medius, and two, to work on evening out any imbalances so that I can begin to train my glutes and my lower body in peace without any sort of frustration. All right guys, I'm going to hand you over to the voiceover. Hey guys, so the first thing I do for my glute imbalances slash rehabilitation workout routine is I always, always start up with step one, my warm up routine. So I like to do either the elliptical or stairs to get the blood flowing and to warm up my muscles before I move on to my stretching routine. I usually do around three to five minutes. I showed my full stretching routine in my last video, so I'm not going to go through it here. If you guys are interested in hearing more, please check out that video. So after I've finished my three to five minutes of cardio warm up, I then move into my stretching routine. Although I'm not going to show all of it, the important thing is to do enough static and some dynamic stretching to help increase the range of motion that you can achieve during your training session that day. With having an injury myself, this is a crucial step for me. Stretching really makes or breaks a workout and I try to never ever skip it.
Step two is activation. This is also a very important step that you don't want to miss if you have stubborn or weak glutes. Okay, so first off, I'm starting with banded crab walks. This exercise is classic for glute activation, but to be honest, I wasn't doing it before. Um, my sports therapist suggested that I add them in to help strengthen my left glute medius now that it's available to actually do something for once. Um, crab walks are an ideal glute medius strengthening exercise because it involves both medial rotation and abduction of the hip um, and then also you are kind of squatting into it so you're going to be activating your glute max as well. It also can be, be done with a range of resistances. Of course if you're using varying band strengths um, and it's usually done at high reps which is perfect for the glute medius. I will say that it's important to treat this as a warm-up. I think some of us are guilty of trying to exhaust our glutes before actually even getting into the workout and this is definitely a mistake. The last thing that you want to do is completely exhaust the muscle before the workout has even started. The whole point is to get it warmed up and get it activating not annihilating it. I'm not going to go into a lot of detail about the form of this because I'm actually still working on it myself but what I found to work best is to use a lighter band especially if you are still weak like your glutes are still a bit weak or you have a hard time activating them. Put the band just above your knees and make sure that you're squatting relatively low it's honestly it's so hard to get even lower than how i am here but you want to get as low as possible and in order to make this exercise effective you must be turning your knees outwards and not letting them cave in so you really want to try to get the hips open and the knees pointing out and staying in that position i do find it's easier to do this if you have your toes pointed out as well but at the end of the day it's a form of a hip abduction so, so try not to let your knees cave in so the next activation exercise that i'm doing is more for the glute max so the larger glute muscles um i find the hip hinge to be so so effective for me it really works amazing at getting my glutes turned on, especially if I'm having a day where they're a bit more stubborn. Um, this is essentially a Romanian deadlift except with no weight. So you really want to get your hips back as far as possible and try to squeeze your glutes from the bottom or when you're the most bent over and use the glutes to thrust your hips forward to bring you back to a standing position. I find this is such a good one to practice activating your glutes when they're in a stretched position. And then finally, for my last glute activation exercise, I'm doing the trusty hip thrust. Now I will say that this bench is a little bit high for me, um, but it's what was available in this section of the gym, so I just dealt with it. But ideally you wanna have the bench to be sort of in line with your knee. So you want it around shin length or a little bit lower if possible. And again, this is just like a regular hip thrust. Try to get your shins as vertical as possible. I think this does vary person to person and lately I've been having my shins out a little bit more so that they're not quite vertical. But if you can get them as vertical as possible, this is best because this is the position that will activate your glutes most optimally. All right, so before we get into the workout, just a quick word about Audible. I don't think I mentioned it before, but some workouts I prefer to listen to audiobooks and podcasts over music. It just depends on the workout. Ben says that he also likes to do this. Let me know if you guys listen to like audiobooks or podcasts too or if it's just us but anyway i started listening to the secret by Rhonda byrne so this is a super popular book i've heard lots of influencers talk about and rave about but i hadn't listened to it myself becky just recently listened to it and she said it's amazing and that i have to listen to it asap it is actually narrated by the author herself which i love because i feel like it's more of a personal experience when i'm listening if you guys haven't tried listening to audiobooks i highly recommend it i think it's typical for us these days to not feel like we have enough time to read but obviously reading is so important 
and just learning in general. For me, it makes mundane things like cleaning or cardio a lot more interesting and a lot more productive. If any of you would like to try Audible with a free trial that includes one free audiobook and two Audible originals, then visit audible.com slash Robin Galland. So that's R-O-B-I-N-G-A-L-L-A-N-T, just one T, not two Ts, or text Robin Galant to 500-500. That is Robin Galant with one T to 500-500. Thank you so much to Audible for sponsoring this video. Now let's get into the rest of the workout. The third step that I'm taking to modify my training routine to strengthen up my left glute medius and also i just recommend this in general if you do have any imbalances is to do the majority of your exercises unilaterally so as single leg movements another tip is to always start off each set with your weaker side first that way you avoid training it when you're fatigued halfway through the set and of course you're avoiding training your stronger side when you have a full tank the fourth step that I'm implementing is I'm starting all of my lower body sessions with the exercises that will engage my glute medius the most. So these assisted lunges that you're seeing me perform here, these are going to be the most demanding on my glute medius. Following this exercise, each of the sequential movements that I chose require less and less of the glute medius and this is to avoid it fatiguing at the beginning of the workout and it just not activating at all in the later exercises which was happening in the last workout that I posted. So yes, I'm starting off with the assisted lunge because I think this is the best way that's going to help strengthen my glute medius for the actual lunge. It's an extremely similar movement and I'm able to assist myself at the very bottom of the movement which is the most difficult for me like as you can see watching the clips it, i was really struggling to get very low what i will say is that i am purposefully taking a longer stride as well as leaning forward because this lunge variation helps you recruit your glutes more by leaning your torso more forward you're creating more of a hip angle there thus you're going to recruit the glutes more because they extend the hip um, and you're creating less of a knee angle so you're not hitting the depth as much meaning that you're going to be recruiting less quads so that is my goal with this style of lunge baseline it's going to look different we're like why aren't you hitting your knee to the ground i don't think that you need to do that in order to properly recruit the glutes for example i do box squats all the time with a higher box i'm not hitting the ass to grass sort of depth that you would with a regular high bar squat when I'm doing a low bar squat with a high box. But that's the variation where I most recruit my glutes and I least recruit my quads. So that's kind of why I do that. Now, I will say that I wasn't getting to depth as much as I should have in my previous workout video because I had the limited range of motion, but that's what I'm trying to remedy here. So by using the rings or a TRX, I'm really helping myself out of the bottom and allowing my glute medius to struggle and try to do as much work as it possibly can before it decides to just stop working at all, which is what it usually does. But I found these to be really helpful. I did also show them with a band. You can do that as well for added lateral resistance, but but for me, that was just too much, especially on my left side. So I just left it without the band. And of course, if you're not struggling with an injury and you have strong glutes and glute medius, then just stick with your regular weighted lunges. You can do split squats, you can do walking lunges, just as long as it's unilateral if you do have an imbalance. The next unilateral exercise that I did was B stands hip thrusts. If you guys have never tried these, I highly, highly recommend these I definitely credit to being the majority reason for why my glutes are in so much pain right now. They really, really force you to put all, like, well, 70% of the pressure on the working glute. As you can see, you've got one foot planted on the ground in the regular position, and then your other foot is going to be, I like to put my heel in line with the, my midfoot um, of the working leg. Um, and then I like to tip my toe up and that leg you should basically just be using for balance. I absolutely love doing this exercise. I forgot how difficult these were and I'm definitely going to be doing these instead of my regular hip thrusts until I see a bit more progress with my imbalance. 
By the way, for the stationary lunges, I think I was doing sets of 20 on each side because it was assisted, it wasn't even weighted. Um, and then for the B stands hip thrusts, I was doing between eight to 10 reps for each side. Moving on to the next exercise, because I just really enjoy doing these basic compound building exercises, but I'm just modifying them to be unilateral movements. So here I'm doing the B stance Romanian deadlift. It's pretty well the same modification that you're doing for the hip thrusts, except you're stepping your assisting balancing leg a half of a step back and you're going on your toe rather than your heel. And that working leg has all of the focus and you're sitting your hip back just as you usually would have with the Romanian deadlift and powering through your glutes and your hamstrings from the bottom of the movement all the way up to the top. Again, for this exercise, I did around three sets of eight to 10 reps each side. And even with the 20 kg barbell, this was difficult. The second last exercise that I did was the leg curl but i'm just doing it as a single leg curl this one is really really good if you are struggling with a hamstring imbalance where one hamstring is stronger than the other and also in general if you want to grow your hamstrings this is a really great variation to do i find personally my hamstrings are recruited so much more and it's just much more difficult to cheat when you are using both legs even if it's subconscious you tend to swing the weight at the very bottom and you kind of lever it up a little bit uh, with your body or like using your hips when it's just the one leg doing the work it's much more challenging really you can feel it sort of at the very beginning of the movement it's harder to get the machine moving either way just trust me give these a try if you're looking to do something a little bit different and i highly recommend to slow down the movement and here I am doing three sets of, I think, around 12 to 15 reps on each side. Okay, so for the very last exercise, I am now allowing myself to fully fatigue my glute medius. So I'm choosing to do hip abductions, which pretty well isolate, not completely because you are using your glute max here as well, but they really do target the glute medius. And what I'm trying to do is to keep my torso sort of in a neutral position. I don't recommend leaning forwards or sitting up on the machine or anything like that. I, I think just the standard works well enough. Um, otherwise, you're just doing a crazy exercise for the sake of it, in my humble opinion, where you're just kind of doing a glute max exercise where you can do like many other exercises that are more efficient. Anyway, I'm going off on a tangent right now. But for glute medius, this is really, really good. Alternatively, if you don't have this machine, you can just sit on the corner of a bench and use a band. But I really like using the machine when I can because it's just a smoother line of resistance. And I am going very, very light here. And I'm trying to do rather than doing even like 15 reps, I'm aiming to do 30 plus reps here and this is because the glute medius is as i mentioned earlier in the video it's a a muscle that's meant for stamina more than anything it's there to keep you upright and standing and moving around for long periods of time so it's not made to be loaded with heavy weight and to do a short number of reps so the best way to train it is low weight and many many reps especially if you have weaker glutes and glute medius to start off with and so after i've completed my three sets of probably 30 to 40 reps i am then just doing a single leg abduction by putting my right leg up a little bit higher and keeping it as uninvolved as possible and i'm just going to be using my left leg and really focusing on keeping that left glute medius engaged and working. For the first time ever, it didn't start cramping up when I did this exercise, so I'm really, really happy. I think that means that I did really well with this workout. So yeah, that is everything for this workout, guys. I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in my next one. Bye!